teams participating in this uh, in this sorry uh, in this program um, over the previous six editions and as a result we had startups created teams prepared to connect with the market and uh, teams that gather uh, conditions to apply and uh, more competitively for European funds. Um, so this is a very important program uh, for IST community. And I would like to thank once again to NTT Data, but also to the original members of the program, Antonio Brandão Vasconcelos from Average slash NTT Data and Luis Caldas de Oliveira, um, which I give the word to, um, to, 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 to present technically in this edition. Thank you very much, Carla. So this is really, as, as Carla said, an important program for IST. Uh, we started uh, in a program, the idea for this program started actually with Antonio Brandon Vasconcelos with the previous idea that we should uh, find uh, commercialization paths for uh, intellectual property produced by IST. We started with patents and, uh, and making the, the inventors of the patent stock with potential licensees of those technologies. And we found out that what was interesting in that process was the, the, the interaction between the researchers and the potential users of the technology. Uh, and then it was easy to move to the next stage, was to create this program that was going a little a step backward and uh, helped researchers to talk to the markets while they are doing their research and at a time when they can change the way they do the research to fit better um, an opportunity in the market. So most of this program is designed to help researchers understand the value of their knowledge, uh, the technology they master, and find a way to uh, put it on the market, but not, uh, but not by ourselves. You have to understand what the market needs. You have to create empathy with the market. And that is why we have this amazing cooperation from Ideals and Entity Data. Uh, they'll help us because they have so many customers, uh, uh, companies that are potential clients of our technology uh, that are their customers, uh, and they can do the bridge between the researchers and the industry. Uh, and that is really the value of this. So the, the teams during this program are going to start the first part in seeing, uh, understanding their own technology and see how this technology can be changed into value for the market. And on the second stage, on the second part of the program, uh, these guys, uh, the T ideals team and people from NTT Data are going to help you to talk to people that have problems that your technology can help. So you can see how you can modify, change, understand the value of the technology. And uh, what we did in the past was really impressive uh, in terms of uh, people that are poor researchers that, that were mastering a technology that doesn't look very much, something like basic science. And then they saw a way to the market. What is the, what is the road? Some of these technologies are closer to the market, some are farther away. But talking to potential customers is really the, the goal of this program. And in the end, you have to put a pitch, create a pitch that can help you to do this many, many times over. So it's just, you have time to train with the support of people from Ideals, how to present yourselves and your technology, learn from what people tell you and make a, a compelling presentation about your research and your technology that is going to be useful. So I thank you very much for cooperation of uh, uh, Entity Data that is being a partner in this, uh, as Carlos said, for many, many years, and special the team of Ideals that have a huge experience on this. I will also give you a little kickoff in the first workshop of the, of the program. I'll try to understand how to design, how to make you understand how to design a value proposition. But most of the time you'll be working with the ideal teams and you're going to uh, have uh, you know, an immersive, immersive uh, hands-on experience and how to value your own technology and how to present that technology to something that might be useful to someone else. Thank you for being here, and I hope that you have a lot of questions to the teams. Carla, up to you. Well, thank you, Luis. Pedro? Carla, thank you. Uh, thank you, Professor Luis, for the kind words. Um, uh, good afternoon to all the audience. Uh, I was given the opportunity to say a few words representing entity data in this kickoff. Uh, of this new edition of the, the Lab to Market program. 
As Carla mentioned, thank you. I have I currently have in-house the responsibility of university relations and digital upskill in Entity Data Portugal. This by itself demonstrates the importance we give to close cooperation between the academic and the corporate worlds. My brief introduction, I don't want to take the stage for long, will underline the commitment, relevance, and importance we give to this program. Let me first, uh, for you guys to understand, to better understand our willingness to be a part of this, let me explain in a nutshell our core business. We hire young talent, we take, we believe we take good care of them and use their talent in our projects, giving them conditions, of course, along the way for them to grow personally and professionally. Having said this, our main driver to be a part of this program is very easy to understand. We do it because we believe it's a good way to return value to society, value that we consider we somehow take and extract from that same society when we absorb talent. There are several ways companies can do this, okay? Uh, this being returning value to society. For Entity Data Portugal, this is the best way for us to do it. Applying our knowledge and expertise in areas where they are required through, of course, nonprofit collaborations. Having the opportunity to do so directly with technical, which we consider to be an excellent young talent generator, gives us additional motivation. This is the part where I, where I confess I, uh, that I'm an ex-student, so I'm additionally uh, overwhelmed for being here, okay? And allow me uh, the metaphor that is the same in English, Portuguese, and Spanish, and which pictures or describes it perfectly. It's the cherry on top of the cake. It sounds like a bad translation, but it's, it, it is what it is. It's the cherry on top of the cake. But Technico is not only a young talent generator. One other important part of its mission is research, develop, and innovation. This program focuses on this part of its mission. Knowledge and innovation are very important, as Professor Luis uh, uh, mentioned, uh, per se, for any university, for academic careers, international reputation, attract the best, publish new papers, register new patents. But in my opinion, if knowledge and innovation do not leave the lab room, they are not much use to society. The bottom line result of work produced in an academic lab should bring positive impact to our society. Bridging this gap is what this program is all about. Lab to market, finally. It could be called lab to society, but services, as Professor Luis also mentioned, and products people don't want or people don't need and doomed to fail. The market part included in the program's name adds this crucial economic perspective. One final word uh, regarding the results of things so far, which Carla mentioned in, in his uh, initial uh, intervention. Uh, one of my first questions to Susanna, uh, one colleague of mine, when I was preparing this opening statement was about success and returns and results of things so far. This is due to many years of consultancy. You have to understand it's kind of hardwired by now in, in my brain. Susanna didn't want to give me an, any biased answer, so she asked technical for a quick comment. We have, as Carla mentioned, projects applying for European funds to continue their investigations, a startup being created. Last year's projects all applying in, or in the process of registering patents. But I must quote the part that for me represents success and results in a non-tangible way. A quote, this program makes a difference to the teams involved. So my final statement, let's make that difference once again. Thank you all and good luck. Well, thank you, Pedro, for your words. And, and now let's meet, the, meet Marta and meet and Linda and, and let us tell her let her tell us, I that let them tell us um, how successful this program was in in their projects that they brought here in 2021 and in 2019. So Marta participated in 2021 with the project Dental uh, Biomatrix, 
uh, and Ermelinda participated in the, the 2019 edition with the project FTEB. So I'm going to start with Marta no, for no particular particular reason. So Marta, would you like to share with us uh, your experience mm -hmm. in this and if you recommend this, this program to other teams that are working on projects in the lab? Okay. Hello, everyone. Um, good afternoon. Um, thank you very much for your invitation to be here today uh, talking a little bit about my experience through lab to market So I'm not sure if I can uh, share my some presentation here. Uh, do I have access to it? Is it yes, you have. Okay, so I will just briefly talk a little bit about um, dental biometrics. That was um, basically our pro uh, our product and the project that we applied uh, to Lab to Market last year. So with Lab to Market, we had the opportunity to define these five important aspects. Uh, for example, to understand better uh, the problem itself, also to find and to understand and define our solution, our idea, to develop a business model, also to analyze our competition and to understand what was our main advantage compared to the other uh, solutions in the market. And we had the opportunity to build our team. So just briefly to introduce to you the problem here related to dental biometrics. So this was re regarding to tooth loss. So uh, tooth loss is a global health problem representing a burden to society and the economy. So as you can see here, periodontitis uh, is an inflammation of all the teeth supporting structures that usually is caused by bacteria accumulation. Uh, this will eventually form these pockets surrounding tooth it will destroy all the periodontal tissue, so all the teeth supporting structures, and eventually will lead to tooth loss. So we, we thought that uh, it was really important to finding here a functional periodontal treatment, and we actually observed that there was no product in the market that could regenerate the, the whole tissue. So because of that, we, uh, we defined this solution, our idea was dental biometrics, that was an off-the-shelf animal-free injectable product for periodontal regeneration. And we actually uh, understood that dental biometric co could uh, reduce costs and time. It would also improve efficacy and patient satisfaction. And again, we would also help dentists uh, gaining reputation as first movers and being uh, staying ahead of competition. So with lab to market we were uh, able to describe better our product. So to be able to communicate um, about our, um, our idea to people that do not have a scientific background. And also we were able to, to define better the characteristics of our product, but thinking of, uh, already in the market needs. So our team was composed by engineers from Department of Bioengineering, Institute Superior Technic, uh, but also uh, by dentists from Periodontology Department, from Instituto Universitaria Gajuni. So, so we believe that having this clinical perspective was uh, also very valuable for our project. Uh, but when we applied last year to Lab to Market, we our main objectives were to first uh, develop our product, taking into consideration the market need and expectation. So we wanted to understand the market need and define better our competitive advantage so that when we would perform our R&D studies and even the preclinical data, we would uh, not lose uh, so much time and money uh, because we already thought about these questions. Also, uh, we thought that lab to market would be very helpful for us to acquire all the skills for the development of successful project applications to national and international calls. So um, with lab to market, we also had to think about different questions that usually in the lab we don't have to deal with. So for example, we had to think about if our product was really competitive, uh, who were our main competitors and uh, what was our main difference compared to the other commercial solutions? So was this something really valuable or not? And then we also had to think about the market. So was the mar market really interested in our idea? 
and who were our potential clients and how would we be able to, to reach them. So um, we also developed with lab to market we had a lot of um, training sessions and a lot of meetings so we were able to define our uh, better our advantage and to do this analysis about our competitors. So we also had uh, the opportunity to develop a business model. And here I just want to highlight to you, for example, that when we were identifying first our customer segments, initially we were only thinking about dental professionals and medical devices companies. So, uh, however, with all this lab to market feedback, we actually uh, had the opportunity to uh, identify a different customer segment, segment that initially we were not thinking about. So, for example, all the animal healthcare sector. So, actually, through lab to market and through this program, we were able to contact the, um, some veterinarians and understood that might be uh, interest in applying our product also in the animal market. So um, through lab to market, so there's, a, a, as it was already mentioned here, a very important phase that we had to validate and contact the market to be able to understand if our product is valuable or not. So in this phase, we had the opportunity to talk and contact a lot of people. Uh, and as you can see here, we talked with people from different backgrounds. So also with dental professionals and companies, but we were also able to uh, talk with people from health acceleration programs and even VCs. So we could also understand not uh, only about our technology and about, about the scientific back background, but, but also understanding what we would need to do next in order to be able to translate um, this idea into the market and also uh, what we need to do to be able to receive some funding to continue our um, studies. So I just want to summarize here to you uh, that lab to market was really helpful for us. Uh, we were able to achieve some important aspects. So for example, we understood and defined better our value proposition. We also built a team that we believe um, is very strong and has a lot of expertise. We also were able to define better our advantage compared to the competition. So we know exactly who are our competition, who is our competition and what uh, is our main advantage compared to them. We also developed some business model and we had the opportunity to validate our product with the market. I really believe that this is really important so that we will not lose time and money uh, doing something in the lab that then we could not translate because there's not, there is no uh, market need. And I really liked, would like to just mention here that a very important thing that we got through lab to market was the establishing of these uh, different collaborations. So we had the opportunity, for example, to talk with different institutions that actually were really uh, interested in our product. And we established a collaboration, for example, to perform the in vivo animal studies with a different university and research institute. So we are now uh, developing this uh, collaboration that was only possible due to uh, lab to market. So right now, uh, as I mentioned, we are still contacting the market. We are establishing these collaborations. Uh, we are also um, preparing everything for the IP protection. So we are finishing the R&D studies that we need to file for a patent. Uh, also, we are still learning and understanding better the medical device regulation. So, um, and we are also preparing new applications for different calls um, that are, we want to apply. So thank you very much for your attention. And I would like to, to really um, say that I truly believe that lab to market was really helpful for us. Uh, because it made us thinking about different aspects rather than science. Uh, for example, regulatory and product development, as well as, for example, commercialization and uh, valorization plan. So thank you very much for your attention, and I'm open for, for questions.
So thank you, Marta. Does anyone has a question for Marta? Well, if we don't have questions for Marta, thank you again, Marta, for your yeah, presentation. Thank you. And I would like to invite Ermelinda to, to talk a little bit about her experience in Lab to Market. Um, can you hear me? Okay, loud and clear. Uh, thank you so much for this opportunity. Uh, when I was listening now to Marta, I was nodding because really I can uh, see myself in this experience and uh, also in the, the way in how positive this experience was uh, also to me. Uh, I have pretty much the same uh, feeling that Marta has. Uh, the program was extremely positive, uh, firstly, because it helped us understand all these concepts around the value proposition canvas. And it it's a, sounds all very intuitive, you know, to speak about value proposition, clients, pains, gains, and jobs. And all this sounds very intuitive but actually when you try to apply this to a real product then a lot of questions come to your mind and it's not and it's not so easy to define even very simple things like who is our client we really got stuck in this in the first place that we were convinced that the client for our product was uh, was the final consumer and then we realized that there were other segments in the value chain that could be interested in our, our uh, product so when we started this, we did not even know who our client was. So uh, it was all uh, very interesting to um, understand finally all these concepts and about partners, about uh, competitors, about um, uh, competitive advantage, uh, market share, all these things that we really were not aware of. Uh, and, and this is a language, it's a very specific language that is very far from what we are used to uh, in the scientific community. We are used to a very uh, technical and, and, and accurate way to define our uh, product um, um, specifications. Uh, but uh, this, uh, uh, when you talk with the client or with the partner, sometimes you need a more conceptual approach because it doesn't help. Uh, when you tell them that uh, well, my product measures uh, uh, the pH of meat, uh, but if you tell that uh, it, it is the sensor for meat quality, then they can relate to that. So it helped us uh, uh, start using a more conceptual language uh, um, and especially targeted to the different uh, partners or, or clients, because uh, then we had to talk with uh, uh, not only potential clients, but also the uh, stakeholders and even competitors. And we had to adopt the way we talk with these different uh, partners, let's say, or different entities in, in the value chain. Uh, and this was uh, very positive. Um, so, uh, as I said, our product was a sensor about of meat quality. And uh, uh, what was the most uh, difficult and also um, positive thing was that we had to talk with all these uh, potential uh, partners um, or uh, different entities in the in the value chain um, and this uh, was we had to you know go really outside of our comfort zone which is our protected scientific community and our technical language uh, and this uh, really uh, helped us uh, position our products um, uh, towards what the client really values and what the client really needs. Um, but it actually helped us understand that our product was not really fully satisfying the client needs. Uh, it would have to be uh, integrate other solutions to really meet the, the tasks, let's say, of, of the client. Uh, so in the end, uh, the, the, we did not, in the end, translate our um, product to the market because it, was, it, it did not have the minimum value that it was needed. Um, and also we, we realized that participating in this project was also a way to kind of test our team, you know, uh, because our team was good in developing the, the sensor 
but it did not really had the motivations, nor, in my opinion, the skills then to translate the the the, the sensor into the next level, into a, a product, into a minimum value of products that we could uh, piloting. Um, so this was in the end our our problem. Um, but we got uh, uh, different skills that I think helped us mainly to communicate with the different uh, um, audience than the, the scientific community. Uh, it helped us make it made uh, above all the bridge between this uh, technical um, and accurate language that we use to a more conceptual uh, language. And I think that in the end, uh, it all turned out that to be very helpful even to get uh, financial support for other pro projects that uh, I now have because it helped me to sell my science in a different way, you know, in a more uh, positive, uh, uh, approachable way. In, and it helped, us, it helped me also to think uh, when I'm trying to sell an idea to, to a potential um, funding agent, agents, it helped me to, to put the, the, the idea in a framework that it's more, uh, to wrap it up, you know, better. <laughs> in a framework that it's easier for the funders to understand and also to think, even though uh, I have, I may have a project with, which has a, a TRL which is low, uh, but I always think of uh, how could this in the end impact society? How could this in the end uh, be transformed into a product or into a service that could be um, helpful or reach the market at some point? Uh, so um, I think this was in the end very positive above all because because of this because of the way in which uh, uh, we had to go out of our comfort zone and change our way to communicate our ideas so basically that's it well that's a, that's a very interesting feedback I have wish Carlos Oliveira with his hand up wish yeah, uh, yes, I, I also like to ask Linda and Marta if this program had somehow changed the way. Uh, Linda said a little bit about that, but is this, did this program change the way you look at research? That means when you select uh, a subject of the res for research, did you take into consideration now something more than just interesting because it's an interesting topic? There is uh, something that you want to do. You, do you start by sele selecting now your research topics, uh, taking into account the impact that it might make to society, for example? Did this program contribute to that? Linda or uh, yeah, well, I, I would not say that I that I would select the topics uh, based on that uh, because. Uh, as any scientist, we are really very curiosity driven, you know, but uh, I do uh, steer the project towards that, you know, um, I try to steer them towards a more um, applied approach. Yeah. 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 Just to add something, um, I, I agree with uh, what Ermelinda said. Um, probably will not, I will not restrict um some a good idea that uh, or something that i had interested in but if we think about applying for a specific call or to have funding and to be able to do the things that we really are interested in i believe that this is very important and i actually uh, this program helped me a lot to understand better the market need and if it's something that people are interested to pay and uh, to fund. So I believe that in order to write and to apply for specific calls, I believe that this program helped us to select the, the specific uh, projects and aims that we want to pursue. Yeah, it's, more like, that... like, it's like uh, we kind of approach uh, a funding, for instance, from the point of view of a, a value proposition canvas, you know? <laughs> Just the target, it's not really a client that is going to buy a product, it's a funding agency. That, yeah. <laughs> but yeah. we make this analysis, you know. 
We had other teams that said exactly that. Every time they, they make a proposal, they use the value proposition canvas for the proposal. Yeah. That's, that's, uh, we had something. But uh, let me just point out to another outcome that was more obvious in the case of Hermelinda. Uh, when you decide not to pursue uh, something is also a good, pro a good result, okay? Because in mm -hmm. uh, some a limited number of weeks, you can make a decision that if you decided otherwise, you would be wasting your time much more than this one in doing something that probably does not have value for society. So a negative uh, outcome of this is actually a positive for the persons because you can spend your efforts in some other subject. Uh, so mm -hmm. it's the, the, the cost, opportunity cost. Uh, and by just deciding not to pursue that, you get value from the time that you get free to do other things. So don't forget also, this is a good outcome for us. Uh, for having people decide not to do this is also is good. Okay, maybe maybe there are other questions for, from the audience. Yes, I have a question here from David. Yeah, it's, it's not just a question, it's a, it's a comment about the, the two cases of Marta and Melinda. I think it's, uh, both of them are, I would say, a success as, as Professor Carla has mentioned because even even yeah uh, repurposing your your efforts towards other ideas is, is, a, is a success in, in itself uh, a former boss of mine told me that this, this is spanish i don't know if there's a direct translation into into portuguese but it's strategy is the art of saying no to things of giving up so that you can allocate your resources to more profitable or, or interesting stuff so it's 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 really even doing so and it's very hard for, for a researcher that it's curious driven. But uh, when you say no, no, we, we should not pursue this one. Uh, it's something very hard. And I think this program is about making you feel in out of your comfort zone. Every scientific, every researcher is very comfortable within the, the within their labs, but it's a completely thing. Once you have to you have to look outside and talking to people, because sometimes you are in love with your with your idea. And then you, you, you must continuously do a challenge of, of, to your value proposition, Some, something you, you never thought of it, it, it was just science, which is good, but sometimes you, you, you need to, to challenge, is, is it useful, is, uh, is this the purpose of, of what I, which is the purpose of what I am doing? I'm doing just basic science or are we going, are we targeting something else? Basic science is, is necessary these days, of course it will always be, but applied science is, is giving a second life to, to what you've done in terms of basic science. So it's 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 really good to 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 go and leave the leave the lab and talk to people, and of course succeeding in launching your your product or selling or licensing is something that you 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 are going to be very proud because in the end that curiosity driven effort has given something to society. So I'm really happy that this these two examples are probably two cases of success as, as professor said. So congratulations to all of you. And uh, we'll see if this year we, we can get a couple, at least a couple of success stories in addition to these ones. Thank you, David. Uh, I, I don't see any raised hands to, to make more questions to Marta and uh, Melinda. So I'd like to thank you both for these success stories that you presented here today. Um, and now I would like to move on for the presentation of this year program, uh, which is going to be made by Juan, right? Juan? Yes. Yes. Um, well, the floor is yours. Yeah, okay. Uh, I, um, I'm just gonna share my, share my screen right now. Let me know when you can see it. Okay, so the, um, uh, for this presentation, I'm just going to go through very, uh, it's going to be brief. I'm going to go through three main points. I'm going to introduce a bit uh, about ideals and, and our role within entity data. I'm then going to talk about the program itself, the main objectives and the, and the calendar uh, we have in mind. And then just to remind you some, some of the uh, most important key success factors which have already been, been mentioned, uh, as well as uh, what, what results you can expect if you if you participate in the program. 
Okay, so firstly about what I deals where we are part of Entity Data, which is uh, the sixth largest ID, ID service company in the world. Uh, uh, Entity, da Entity Data is a, a global company and within, within Entity Data, we, we operate in Entity Data EMIL, which stands for Europe, Middle East, um, Africa and Latin America. And, and Ideals is a, is, a is a specialized brand within Entity Data, uh, mainly focused in bringing innovation to business and helping, helping corporations uh, um, develop new, bus new, new businesses and startups also uh, actually uh, bridge the, the gap between technology and the market. So as to, as to what kind of um, clients and services we provide, uh, while well, we work with venture capitals, corporates, um, and academia as well as, as academia institutions as well as startups themselves, and we provide them with uh, with a with a, um, with a set of different. Uh, we work for them, developing different kinds of projects from uh, evaluating investment opportunities, evaluating different market opportunities, um, as well as uh, identifying uh, important trends, developing market strategies for startups. And in particular, uh, the lab to market programs we are, we we've been developing with uh, with IST for the for the past years, uh, which is mainly focused on um, on exactly bridging what I what I just said before, bridging the gap between between technology uh, within R and D technology and and the market. How to how to bring uh, innovative technologies to the to the market. Okay, so that was just very um, very short introduction. And now, actually, onto the onto the onto the lab to market program. Um, well, as as of course, as the, as the names as the as as the name itself, uh, we're going to uh, the objective is to um, uh, the different projects uh, develop a go to market strategy and complementing complementing that strategy at the same time. Uh, by by being constantly in touch with the market on with that and the market also means here different potential clients potential partners and and really um contrasting uh what what the what we understand of our tech of your technology of your helping you understand uh, what your tech the, the potential of your technology and actually validating uh, the the value of this technology in the market um and to do this, uh, we actually, uh, uh, I mean, uh, we are actually uh, trying to. Um, we will help you try and, and solve uh, two, two, two big questions. The first one is called uh, problem solution fit, which consists on understanding uh, how your technology is actually helping uh, solve a problem. Like, is there a real a real problem to solve? How effective is the the technology I am developing uh, to help solve it? And is there actually a business case for me in this? And then the product market fit is actually uh, saying, okay, I, is my product, uh, does my product have market acceptance? Are customers willing to, to pay for it? And, and, and really that's the, the two main phases of the, of the program that we are going to have, which uh, if we go into a, um, sorry, If we if we go into a bit more level of detail as to what actually these two phases mean, um, it is the program is structured into two different uh, in this this pro, uh, problem solution fit and product market fit. We've called it shape the idea and validated. And and the first um, the first part of shaping the idea is actually uh, getting to to work with different innovation tools such as the value proposition canvas, the business model canvas. Uh, our innovation innovation teasers data sheets and, and understanding um, what what are what the what the technology um, how do how do I, how do we actually um, create a, develop a new business uh, based on the on the R and D technology that you have uh, that you are that you are developing and and you will you will actually be using these tools and we will be helping you. Um, Helping you work on them, uh, how to uh, how to get your ideas uh, together and organized and, and validate them with you, and then the second the second phase of it is actually validating it with with the 
with, with uh, again, as I said, potential clients, potential users of the technology, potential partners you may need to, to uh, partner with uh, to develop the, the technology. And, 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 and that those are the main, two, the main two phases, which actually um, look like this in the, in the calendar. In the, in, the, in the calendar we have so far. Uh, we are currently in the, uh, uh, selection, in the selection phase. If you look uh, down here, um, maybe you can correct me, Carla, but the, the, the application period is open until the, 20, until the 23rd of this month. And after, and when you, when you, and after the, this, this application period is over, we will select the projects that will participate. And, and for this purpose, uh, we encourage you that uh, you, pro you provide a, um, an extensive description of your technology as, uh, uh, to, the, to, the best, to the best extent that you can, so we can actually we can understand the best um, as much as we can of your, of your projects and, and your objectives. Um, so that, that would be an important part uh, for you to, to bear in mind when you're doing the application process. And then actually, uh, we will select the, the, the awarded teams and the, um, and, the, and, the, and, the, and the and the project will start on uh, on mid-March. Uh, the first the first phase of the project uh, we will be during the, well during both phases of the projects we'll be having weekly meetings with your with with all of you and we will be keeping track on 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 the on your evolution and, and how to use uh, these tools. Uh, to actually uh, get a, a, a structured uh, business idea of your of your technology, and we will begin contacting potential clients. This is important because, um, as as was said at the, in the beginning by Luis and and also Marta and Ermelinda have mentioned before, uh, the market the market contact part of the, of this project is actually uh, very important. So we have to get um, so we have to re to get really uh, working towards it from the from the very beginning to to maximize uh, potential impact. So we will begin uh, working on on these tools and getting uh, uh, and getting the your uh, and helping you uh, structure a business a business idea of your of your of your projects and and then after after Easter uh, after Easter we have a midterm evaluation where where you're going to. To present uh, the, your advances to the date, and then the second phase starts. Where, where, well, we will keep on uh, working on the working uh, working with you uh, and, and having weekly meetings uh, to keep on validating the, the, the your presentations and, and the previous uh, points made, uh, your value proposition, your competitors analysis, your your market uh, your market size, potential partnerships. Uh, and keep on validating them with real interviews with potential clients. That's the main goal. And then it then it it will all come together at the end uh, in the in the last week of of May, well actually beginning of June, well in which you will have a final pitch presentation. All the work we've been we we will have uh, you will have developed during the during the two phases of the project will come together at the end. Well, you will deliver a a final pitch presentation. Okay, and finally, onto the onto the key success factors we have uh, we have identified from previous editions. Again, it's very much related to to, the, to to actually contacting the market. We 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 have decided that we we, we need to begin uh, we need to get focused on understanding the market and, and begin contacts as, as early as possible to maximize the the actual number of interviews we. Uh, um, you you get uh, you get because this this is very helpful to validate uh, your hypothesis and in the end um, in the end we you never you never know if you are on the right track until you actually talk to an industry expert and and you say okay this is the this is the right path to continue or or it's not uh, and to do this we we actually we need to 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 understand very well the market who are the competitors what what is my what is the, the our position within the within the value chain who is my who, who can be my partner who can be my competitor and why am i different to my competitor these are all, all these points have been have been made earlier and and then uh, and then again understanding the market really helps you um, uh, 
identify new new applications which maybe you didn't have in mind uh, at the beginning maybe maybe you identify a, a new potential use that has earlier acceptance for your for your technology and and we didn't and you didn't think of it earlier and of course identifying not only competitors but but potential but potential partners okay and 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 just to to um to finish off uh, right here, uh, these were last year's participants. We have uh, Mar we have Marta from Dental Bio Biometrics, but but there were also for other for other participants. And just so you can get a, a feeling of, of 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 how it went last year uh, for the second phase, which was five weeks long, uh, ninety five more over ninety five entities were contacted, and and we got feedback from from some of them from from the ones you are you are seeing here um, and again it's it's feedback it's interview it's the objective is to interview well of course with potential clients but also with uh, with competitors maybe uh, potential um, potential in, um, potential investors um, and so on and and finally uh, so you can see actually more more into last year's results and, and what you can what you can expect uh, from the program. Um, the main the main objective is to actually uh, get your uh, get lab research and uh, lab oriented research into a business oriented research, as as was mentioned earlier. This is the uh, uh, and how to develop a product and be ready to to pivot uh, to pivot uh, our our focus and, and really uh, orient our research not to science itself, but but also have a, a business. A business setup, a business mindset to conduct our to conduct your research. Um, you will you will, at the end of the program you also have a commercial material. We, we mentioned I mentioned earlier uh, your uh, your inv an investor teaser. You will have developed an, an investor pitch. You will have developed um, uh, many many other um, product data product data data sheets, uh, which will, will will you have uh, which will be which will you, you will have developed. And, and you will have ready to, to continue further on and to, and to explore in the market, having more interviews and, and advancing in on your on your project. And you will have, uh, you are, I think you will, you will have received valuable market validation from, from industry experts in your, in your field. And, and hopefully, um, and hopefully you will, you will have um, uh, some, some potential um, collaborations and, and pilot project opportunities. And this, these are actually on the on the end of the at the at the bottom of the screen. Uh, these are the results from last year. Ninety six entities contacted and uh, and the feedback obtained from twenty one potential partners and customers and and then um, some some many collaborations and pilot projects. Um, so, so that's what, what I think you will uh, mostly get from it. Besides, um, I mean, besides what uh, Marta and Ermelinda said. Um, so, well, uh, thank you very much. Um, and that's that's it from my side. And, and of course, if you have any questions, uh, feel free to to ask. To ask anything. So now we can open up the, the Q and A um, part of the, the session. So if anyone has questions, please raise your hand um, or just sign us that you you would like to pose a question. You can also do it in the chat if you'd like. Aitor? Yes, I, I was looking to the button to raise a hand. Okay, just I already find it. Go ahead. Okay, hi everyone. Uh, thank you very much for the presentations. Uh, I have a question. Um, you said the teams, it's up to five, but it has also a minimum of participants, right? It's uh, two, um, well, I saw on the website, and uh, it's mandatory for the two elements, at least for two elements, uh, assists all the weekly uh, meetings, uh, how it works in that way. 
so a team has to, to have at least two elements and a uh, maximum of five. Uh, regarding the, 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 the meetings, I'm going to leave one to talk a little bit about that, but I think it's ideal that you follow up, or at least one of you does, but Juan, would you like to answer that part? Um, yes, the number, the, um, the number of teams is usually between, between four and six. Um, no, the, the, it's not the number of teams, it's sorry. the number of elements of each team selected. Uh, yeah, I think that was the question from my tour. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, yes, sorry, I, sorry, it's relevant. Yes, I, I, I will answer. So um, basically, I think uh, at least two, it would be required because, of course, sometimes uh, we can have an overlap of meetings or yeah. so if we need some answer from your side or some information. So if one of you is not available, then we hopefully we should have a backup in case, okay. in case we need it. So at least two. Uh, is, is a good number, two, three is a good number. Okay, thank you very much. Welcome. Now let me say that it's two people, a team needs at least two people, of course, but uh, the second thing is that uh, this is rather intensive, okay? You have to understand what uh, people are saying to you. Sometimes what people tell you is not what they mean, and you have to learn that. And when there are two people, uh, watching and listening to the answers and to interviewing potential customers or partners or suppliers or whatever, uh, you need to understand what is behind what they are saying. And more, more than one people is necessary to understand that. Uh, so that is very, very important. And this is also some, something that is a not put of this, is to understand that people like to be nice. Uh, and sometimes they are not honest because just they, they want to be nice to you. Uh, and you want the, the, the real truth from the, from the market. Uh, and being nice not, 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 does not help you. Uh, and you have to understand when people are actually sincerely being nice and when they are really providing relevant information to you. And that is why it's nice to have more than one people, more than one person speaking. Uh, and also with the, the, the regular meetings with, uh, with the Ideals team, again, each one of you is going to have a different uh, perspective what is being said and it's good to discuss it during the week uh, what was uh, discussed in the in the one to one meetings that you're going to have with the team okay thank you very much anyone has any more questions about the the program itself So we have a question here in the in the, the chat. Uh, Jose, would you like to, to say it out loud your, your question or you have having problems in talking? The big does not work. <laughs> it's all the message. Right, okay, okay, okay. So the question is, do all the members need to be in masters or PhD from IST? We currently have a team of four members, but only one is at the master's in IST. The three other members are in the bachelor's at IST as well. The MIG doesn't work. Well, the important thing here is, is that at least 50% of the team, it, it's from technical. So I think you meet that requirement because, you know, I, I, from what I can understand, even the, the, the three other members are doing a, a program here at Technic, right? Yes, they're, they're bachelors, so they're in a the bachelor well, program. So. Yes, so that's not the that's not the problem. You can apply with that composition of your team. So my suggestion here is that uh, you apply, uh, and of course you also get the feedback. Uh, so applying is, 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 is does not cost anything. It's just you presenting your idea, uh, and. Uh, of course, uh, if if it's better if we have more master students in the, the team. But if your idea is very nice, or you have a really all the all the com all the skills necessary to to put your your idea into the market, uh, it, it's fine. It will probably be selected. But it depends a lot on the idea and what uh, are you going to what are the skills that you have to to help to make this idea go to the market. So, any more questions? Mm 
Well, if we don't have any more questions, I, I'd like to remind you that the, the applications are open until the February 23, right? 23rd of February, and it's in Portuguese. And the link for the applications is here. You can also find it in uh, Tech Transfer Office uh, website, pt.tech.ulivo.pt. Uh, and Rita is also going to put the link for the applications uh, here in the chat if you want to, to go straight for it. And this session will be uh, available in our website also so that you can you know, share it with colleagues that you think that want to participate and could come to this session directly. And we are also available for any questions, uh, even not during the session by, by email. So I would like to thank all of, all of the presents, uh, Luis, uh, the IDS team, uh, Pedro from NTT Data, and Juan, Angela, Aitor, also to Marta and Ermelinda for their testimonials um, and their success cases that they brought us here today. And I will terminate this, uh, this, this session uh, be concluded. Thank you all for being here today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you very much.